Hello there, minions. It's Wheezy again. Today, I'm going to give you four easy tips that are going to help you win more Capture the Flag games in Halo Infinite. And I'm also going to give you some bonus tips that are specific to two flag and one flag Capture the Flag. So let's go talk about it. Okay, so we're going to start off with some general tips. And the first tip for winning more games in Capture the Flag is that teamwork makes the dream work. Halo in general is very much a team-oriented game, and objective modes like Capture the Flag are even more important to focus on teamwork. A solo flag capture will rarely work. You might get away with one uh, in two flag, but in one flag it'll be almost impossible. So stay with your team or at least coordinate your movements. And what I mean is, whether you're actually verbally communicating with your team or you're playing with randoms, pay attention to where your team is. If they're moving together, move with them. Not necessarily in a cluster, so one grenade will take you all out, but if they're pushing the flag, push with them. If they're not pushing the flag, don't push by yourself because it's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. Pay attention to your team spawns and pay attention to when they die. If your four-man team is pushing up on the flag and you notice that the other three die and maybe there's one or two uh, left on your team, wait. Don't push, uh, don't push the objective by yourself because even if you do get to the flag and capture it, by the time your teammates respawn and get back to you, you're going to get mobbed by the enemy team either respawning or the ones that didn't die in the first encounter. So stick with your team. Teamwork makes the dream work. Tip number two goes along with that last point. Don't die. This sounds kind of like the rule of duh, but let me clarify why this is important. You are better off pulling back from an engagement, from a fight, to recover your shields and find another way to re-engage rather than pushing a bad situation to try and get a kill. Sometimes in Slayer or other parts of Halo, it can make sense if you're getting 2v1 to just try and take one guy out with you. In an objective mode and capture the flag, you're better off seeing if it looks like you're in a situation where you're getting 2v1, it's better to disengage, maybe drop a grenade, try and move away to cover until your teammates can come and reinforce you. It's better to stay alive than to have to go through the respawn cooldown and to lose that fight. So focus on trying not to die more so than trying to get a kill. Don't get so excited to grab the flag that you get yourself killed as soon as you pick it up. That's not going to do your team any good. There may be some times when you feel like, oh, if I can just grab it and move it out into the open, then my teammate can attack it or my teammates can capture it. That would be very situational if your entire team is coming behind you and they're not that far behind, then you're all essentially pushing together, that might work. But ideally, dying in the Capture the Flag game mode is going to set you back more than it's going to help. Also, if you're carrying the flag and the enemies are closing in, whether it's one enemy or multiple, drop the flag and turn around and fight. You are better off not dying, trying to kill your pursuer, maybe even giving your time, your teammates time to show up and help you, rather than trying to just get the flag 10 feet further down the, down the field, 10 feet further towards the capture point before you get killed. It won't matter that it's that much closer to your base when your team, or when the enemy team recovers it and sends it back to their base. So don't die, fight when you're a flag carrier. You're, it's not glued to your hands. Hit Y or whatever it is on PC. Drop the flag, turn around, and fight. Early, don't wait until you start getting shot. If you notice that someone's closing in, preemptively drop that flag, turn around, and fight. The next point we're gonna get to, point number three, is be a sneaky flag carrier. In Halo Infinite, if you sprint while carrying the flag, your position is revealed to the enemy. Walking, or well, I guess it's still running, but running without sprinting doesn't automatically reveal the icon to your enemy so they can see it through walls. So, do not do it. It's the same thing with flag juggling. In previous Halo games, you could essentially run, jump, and throw the flag out in front of you to move faster across the map. I'm not in, I haven't tested this specifically, but I'm relatively certain that you can't throw the flag far enough in Infinite for that to really speed you up. But every time you do a flag juggle, 
that icon is going to pop up on the enemy's screen so that they know exactly where you are, no matter where they are on the map. So don't sprint and don't flag juggle. Just, just move as quickly and directly as you can towards there while using cover because you would be surprised how many times the enemy can lose track of where you are. And it also gives your teammates time. Your teammates' job is to come and support you and knock out your pursuers. If you are just sprinting across the map and the entire enemy team knows exactly where you are, it's going to make it a lot harder for you. Um, same thing if you've got a cap and you're waiting maybe for your team to return the flag and to flag. When you're holding the flag, the enemy won't know exactly where it is. If you leave it sitting on the ground, they're going to know where it is. So keep that in mind when you're the flag carrier. Allow your team to protect you and allow them to respawn and get back to you if necessary. So don't give your position away. Be a sneaky flag carrier. And the last general point I'm gonna get to, point number four, is that power weapons make a difference. Yes, CTF is not Slayer. However, power weapons and equipment, such as the active camo or the overshield, can lead to critical shifts in the game. They can help you get a team wipe which is ultimately in Capture the Flag, how you get captures. When your team pushes up to the flag, kills the other team, it gives you an opportunity to grab the flag, start moving across the map, you kill their team again, you essentially get the capture. There's, that's kind of the cycle of CTF. You need basically two team wipes, at least, to get a capture. Power weapons make that easier. You get a cinder shot, you get a rocket launcher, you get a sniper, that can make it much easier and that can be a tide turner when it comes to getting that critical capture and what's more than that even if you don't use the power weapons yourself like let's say you're just awful with a sniper rifle right but you're the only one there and no one else is coming to grab it pick it up right maybe try to use it or just burn the ammo or throw it off the i don't know but pick it up so that the enemy doesn't get it as much as you want to use the power weapons if you can and i would suggest you get you know, try using them until you get better at it. But keep them from the enemy as much as you want to be able to use them too. Prioritize that. In, in Halo Infinite, when the power weapons are about to spawn, you get an audio cue saying, power weapons on the way. And then when you get down to like 10 seconds, they, they, you get a timer on the screen for when they're gonna respawn. Time that when you see the power weapons are about to spawn in. Prioritize stopping what you're doing and go and get those power weapons. Because if you don't and the enemy does, then they're gonna be able to turn the tide as opposed to you. So make sure that you prioritize those power weapons. Okay, so now we're gonna cover a couple of specific things for one flag and then a couple of specific things for two flag. So for one flag, capture the flag. This is where only one flag exists on the field and you're either attacking or defending. Make sure, even more so than in general, you push as a team. Since these maps tend to have a larger distance to the flag, as well as a long spawn delay, a solo capture is even less likely. So you really need to have your whole four-man team pushing together in order to team shoot the enemy, get that team wipe, and get a capture. And in addition to that, on the one flag maps, they usually provide you vehicles, so use vehicles for support where available. I wouldn't, I, I have found, depending on the map, but the ghosts and wep and vehicles that can be individually piloted that provide suppression can be extremely valuable as long as you can make sure that you prioritize staying alive. If you put two people in a vehicle like a warthog, and that can be more troublesome just because you're using half of your team to support the vehicle, which gives you less people to actually support the flag or carry the flag. So use your best judgment on that, but again, Work as a team, stay together. If your team's transporting the flag back, get to them and help out. You really need all four people attacking the flag to capture it. The flip side of that is when you're on defense, make sure you're defending as a team. One flag has to flip rounds, obviously, since there's only one flag, so you take turns attacking and defending. When you're on defense, try and stay near your team and near the flag. There's no reason for you to rush all the way across the map by yourself to get killed just so the enemy team can team shoot you and then come in and pick off your team one by one. It, it's better to set up a good defensive area, work with your team to team shoot the attackers so that you can make sure that you don't get overwhelmed and don't give up that capture. In the same way that vehicles be, can be good support when you're on attack, prioritize destroying vehicles and stopping players that have power weapons 
in defense. They can be tide turners, so if someone's got a power weapon, if you see them pick up an overshield, if you see them pick up a rocket launcher, if you see them showing up in a vehicle, use your power weapons, use the team shooting, attack those, those tide turners first, get them killed, and you will have a better chance holding out and defending for your team. Don't go off lone wolfing, don't try and get brave, because what you're gonna end up doing is just, if your team scatters, you're gonna get picked off one at a time, and they're just gonna, they're just gonna walk their way to and from your flag. The last point I'm gonna say about one flag is, take some time to detour and get a better weapon. One flag takes place on larger maps, the, the engagement times are longer, you will need a longer range weapon as well as a close range weapon unless you're purely supporting your team with like a sniper rifle with like a power weapon that you're protecting but try and get a good long range weapon like a battle rifle maybe a commando i still hate the commando but you know it, it's better at longer range a shock rifle something that's good at longer range and then something that complements a close range weapon whether it's your ar for close range the bulldog shotgun the heat wave Make sure you can cover those two distances because you will be encountering both when you're attacking the flag, you'll probably have to pick people off from longer range as you approach. And then as you're retreating to try and get the capture, you're going to have to be fighting off people from various distances as they close in on you. So take the time to go and get some better weapons in one flag. Now let's shift gears and talk about two flag. The first tip specific for two flag is going to be don't leave your flag unguarded. So this is one of the slight variations between one flag and two flag. Since both flags are on the field at the same time, in one flag, your whole team should push together to attack. In two flag, you can do that, it can be effective, but if you're pushing 4v3 on the enemy's flag, right, and one person on the enemy team runs and grabs the flag, even if you win the 4v3, whether it's all four of you or one or two of you survive and you grab the flag, then you'll bring it back, they'll bring theirs forward, and then you've got this juggle situation where they, your teammates have to try and kill their flag carrier while you're trying to protect your flag carrier pretty much by yourself while they're trying to... So, it's better to leave someone within range of the flag, if not actively defending it, at least closer to mid-map so they can support the attack, but also be able to get back and defend the flag if they see someone moving on the flank. Or at minimum, if your team is completely leaving your flag unguarded, right? If you're not with a coordinated team, you're with randoms. At minimum, be back there so that you can, if the either if the enemies are attacking the flag or you get killed while trying to defend the flag, you can at least hop on comms for a second and say, hey, one on flag, two on flag. Just that much can cause your teammates to turn back and realize that the flag is under attack and get back and provide a defense. I can't count the number of times I've been playing with randoms and just popping on the headset and saying two on flag has has made the difference in getting teammates to come back and protect the flag. So, um, so leave someone to defend that. In addition to that though, if you get a team wipe, be sure to push. So again, you want to support that, but if you get, say your mid map, there's 4v4, you knock their team out, push up there. Because when they respawn, it's going to be different, but again, make sure you don't leave your flag unguarded in two flag. And the second point that I'm going to give you for two flag is unlike one flag, it can be better to keep your spawn weapons if you're in a rush. The, the maps are smaller, the respawns are, are more critical. An AR and a pistol are good enough if your team is trying to move the flag across the field and capture it. If your team attacked the flag together and is trying to capture it and they're falling back and you get killed, it's better to respawn and get your ass back to the flag with your AR and your pistol than to take a couple of seconds to grab a better weapon because in those couple of seconds, your team could be outnumbered, overwhelmed, get team shot, get killed. So it's better in those occasions where time matters, whether, even if the other team's gap, capturing the flag, right, and you get killed, it's better for you to get back to there to try and stop them from making that capture with whatever you spawn with than it is to take the time to go and grab that extra weapon. So those are the kind of differences in how you'll play two flag versus one flag. The rest of those tips obviously generally apply to both. So hopefully if you use these tips, they're going to be really useful in helping you win more games of Capture the Flag in Halo Infinite.
Oakley Doakley minions. Those were four easy tips plus some extra for how you can win more games of Capture the Flag and Halo Infinite. If you guys found that useful, leave me a like. If you didn't like it, you can leave me a dislike. If you like stuff like this, if you like getting better at gaming, having some fun, stick around on the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe, become my minion, and I'll see you in the next one.